Ah. We're back now. One of the great kicks of doing the Tonight Show is, is the chance to pre present some new talent. And I'm glad you're in a crazy mood tonight, because this is a young man that we uh, discovered with one of our regularly scheduled auditions. This is his first appearance on television. He's very clever, somewhat warped. Uh, <laughs> which is, if you're going to do comedy, you should be a little bit warped, I think. Would you welcome, for the first time on The Tonight Show, Mr. David Brenner. David! <laughs> Warped. I saw something interesting the other day. I was driving in New Jersey, and I got lost, and... Uh, I always get lost in New Jersey. That whole state looks the same to me. What, I think they have seven people and nine trees, and they keep moving it down the road. <laughs> and you know how a man is, a male ego, when you get lost? Your man, when he's driving a car with a woman, will never admit that he's lost. He'd rather have his left hand suddenly turn into a foot. Boom! <laughs> Who's lost? What lost? What are you giving me lost? I know exactly where we are. We're east of the Mississippi. I'm... And I'm the same way. I hate to ask for directions. So embarrassing. Whenever I ask anyone for directions, no matter what he looks like or how he's dressed, I always roll down the window and call him, sir. He could be standing there picking his nose with a broom. <laughs> And his first reply is always, huh? <laughs> and it doesn't matter anyway, because I can't remember direction. I sit there listening. I don't remember. I hear it, but I nod. Oh, yes, got it. Right. Over the bridges? Yes. Oh, right. Got it. Because once direction involve more than two turns, in my mind, it sounds like a prayer. All right, look, you go down here, you make a left and a right, then you dominate, dominate, blah, blah. Oh, thank you, Father. <clears throat> And I like the guy who comes up there. He's in his car and he says to you, Oh, yes, I'm going that way. I've got to turn off, but follow me. I'll give you a signal. <laughs> so you follow him and follow him. And then finally, when you come to a traffic circle with eight 14-lane highways feeding into it, that's when he gives you his signal. <laughs> and you ever notice you go in a gasoline station, the attendance directions always start the same way. I look, buddy. <laughs> Pull out of the station. No, I want to drive around the pumps nine hours. I don't want to drive. <laughs> and if you have the address you're looking for written on a little piece of paper, he always takes it out of your hand like you can't read. <laughs> Let me see that. 127 Chestnut. Yeah, you're right. Oh, thank you. And did you ever notice that the same guy works in every gasoline station in America. It's that character with the hunting cap with the earmuffs. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, in July, he turns earmuffs up. And he always wipes your windshield with that filthy black rag, which I'm convinced is being mailed from station to station. Hey, Harry, we got the black rag in this morning. Oh, good, I can wipe a windshield. <laughs> and I like when they give you the map treatment. They always give you, oh, look, you're right here. And his hand covers New York, Colorado, and Nevada. <laughs> and who's the guy who makes maps? Why do maps have to be 20 feet by 38 feet? Everyone's got to get out of the car when you open them. I'll pick up in an hour. Just get out of the car. I'll pick up. <laughs> When I'm lost, what I do is I pull into a small town for directions because the nicest, friendliest people in America live in small towns. But sometimes I don't understand what they're saying to me. Like they'll give you, I right, look, drive up yonder a piece. It's about a hoop and a holler. And make a left at the house where Elmer Bodie died. Elmer Bodie's dead, I'll be dipped. I didn't... Now, in my hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania... Oh! What are you doing up so late? <laughs> but in their hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, everything's named after Benjamin Franklin. I right, look, you go over to Benjamin Franklin Bridge, out to Benjamin Franklin Parkway, past the Benjamin Franklin Motel. 
You can miss it. It's shaped like a giant kite with a string and a key. <laughs> and in Los Angeles, you better know your direction because there's no one to ask. No one walks in L.A. It's against the law to walk the street. You get arrested for walking. What are you doing, that man over there moving his legs like that? What are you, a pervert? Get him in the mic. <laughs> You really need a car in Los Angeles because the bus system is nowhere. Do you ever wait for a bus in L.A.? You must get discovered for the movie. <laughs> You're standing at the corner of Hollywood and Vine for nine days. Is there a bus? Is there ever a bus? I, I hold this up. Get him for the movie, that freak, the sunburn one. Get him over here with me. <laughs> and, if you, and if you ever take a bus, I swear, in L.A., they don't have any special route that they drive. Like, here's a driver in Los Angeles on a bus. <clears throat> Hey, there's a beautiful street. I never saw that before. <laughs> but the best place in America to get directions right here in New York City. No matter who you ask, it's true. It's true. No matter who you ask, you always get the same directions and you can always understand them. Excuse me, could you tell me how to get the 58th in Lexington? No, no, what do I look like? An information voice thing I need? Thank you very much. But I'll tell you, the biggest problem in New York City, we have too many people, folks. You know how it is. Were you around Christmas time trying to shop? You're getting the millions of people that are crushing and jamming you down the street. You can't move. You want to go here? They're taking you there. When you leave for work in Manhattan in the morning and get into that throng, the millions, you've got to announce to the crowd where you want to get off. <laughs> Look, could you try to throw me off at 58th and Lexington? <laughs> yes. Try. Try to get me in that next building. I work there. Thank you. <laughs> so I figured out... Thank you. I figured out the way to commit the perfect murder and get away with it. You just take the dead body with you. <laughs> and you slip it into the crowd. They take him for the rest of the week. Right? Can you see that? Also, the crowd picks him up. There he goes in a Macy's department store. <laughs> up the escalator, backwards through women's lingerie. <laughs> Boom! Outside, down the street past Cook's funeral home, where they offer him a job as a sign. <laughs> Boom! He gets thrown in the Army Induction Center, where he's classified 1A. <laughs> Without coughing. <laughs> Boom, he's thrown down on the street, he falls in the traffic, gets killed three more times. <laughs> a high school class trip picks up the body, the teacher. All right, who's talking? <laughs> Is it you? The big boy in the back with the blue face, you. <laughs> Boom, they carry him to Radio City, does 20 minutes with the Rockettes. <laughs> up Broadway, he gets mugged twice. <laughs> and raped once. is picked up and carried and thrown onto a 6th Avenue subway. Boom, a cop sees him. Hey, Harry, look at that guy. Weird, huh? Standing on his head, holding a strap with his foot. But we can't do anything unless he spits, smokes, or carries a lighted pipe. It's always a great kick to see somebody oh, that's wonderful. appear for the first time in front of a national audience and do that well. You're really rooting for him. I don't think David was going to come back. He says, I did good. Why should I come back? 